I understand that you can go and buy a millimeter from basically anywhere, Amazon, Walmart, and you don't have to make it. However, the thing is with this video is it's not necessarily like a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make this. You can follow along if you wanted to, but it's basically to show you how to make any hammer. So like how I made my Shao Kahn hammer, you can use the same modalities to do the, the hammer, the hammer making forging a business. You can do that. Um, kind of like with the Oni masks. For example, the way I made my Oni masks are like the same material, same basic ways how I made my Shao Kahn mask. So let's watch the video and I'll kind of just talk about it. So if you want to learn how to forge millionaire and you do not have access to a forge in the heart of a dying star, let's get to this. Let's do this. So basically what I always do when I'm starting any kind of project and I'm like, how the hell do I do this? And I don't want to waste foam. I get paper. I just get scrap paper, cut it up. I found an image that I wanted to use as a reference. And so I had that pulled up on my laptop. If you don't want the hammer to look too big or too small, you want to like compare it to your own hand. Like, so I could see Hella's hand in this image and see how big the hammer is compared to her hand. And then I did that with the paper. I kind of just cut it out in the size of like what looked right. Basically just cut it out in the foam afterwards. And I always, you always want to angle it. So it actually fits together in a square. Like if you were to, you know, just cut it just like a 90 degree angles, it's not going to fit right. So just go ahead and just do yourself a favor and cut it at like a 45 degree angle and that should suffice. So for the bottom part, there's like this cutout. And so what I did was I took really, 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 really thin EVA foam and I'll have to figure out what size it is and I'll just post it somewhere. And then I cut out little sections. I just kind of eyeballed it like I do everything. Glued that onto a like a thicker piece of foam so that way it was durable because this is where the handle inserts into and you don't want it to like flop around the top part where it has like the little engraving where it's like he who is worthy yields the power of the worst and I, I can't remember what it says I have a dowel it's a wooden dowel and I cut around the circle of that um, for the where the hammer is so for the detailing on the uh, sides there I stole an image off of Google which I recommend you do and then I printed it out I sized it on like paint or something and then I printed it out and then I put wax paper on top of it taped it down and then I put wood glue on top because it doesn't dry super fast and I just had these little square pieces of foam these were left over but you can make them you just like dice them just dice them and then I it took a little bit of time and I just glued those right on top of that image and then I painted over with Elmer's glue a couple of times to make it like hard and not so porous because like otherwise you know it'd be squishy and stuff so I put Elmer's glue on top of it and then as I was letting that dry and the wax from a wax candle I let that melt and I just went ahead and glued the squares together and the rectangles together and it made the hammer and I Right here, you'll see I put foil inside of a like a like a hard plastic thing that I just had laying around, and that's to make the mold. And then I sprayed it with Pam so that the wax wouldn't stick. And like I said, in the meantime, I just glued stuff together because pour wax into the thing to make the mold. And then when I make the mold, when it um, when it dries, basically it cools off. You can just kind of pull the um, foil out. So that way it's easier to remove and you peel off the foil and pick out the little pieces of foam that were stuck in it. I just like mashed on the FOMO, the um, foam clay and I just mashed it in there and then I'd peel it out and then it made the most beautiful mold. And the thing about FOMO is when it dries, it shrinks a little bit. So you want to make sure that you make the, whatever your mold you need, be a little bit bigger so that way it doesn't mess you up later like the little detailing I just cut out little strips again and I just glued them on the side is it weird seeing me in the corner of this video but also like in the video and like my hair changes like every time I make a new part of the hammer and like even now my hair is really kind of weird here I'm trying to fit the dowel in where it inserts on the bottom of the hammer. So basically what I did is I placed the dowel on top, trace around it, and then cut holes. So I have that firmer piece, the thicker EVA foam, and then the thinner piece that goes on top of it that I glue on top of it. So I gotta cut a hole that's the same size on both. And I cut like a little, I drew a cross and then that made it a little easier for me to like cut the little sections. But anyways, 
you want to cut the circle smaller than the, than the dowel, not too much smaller because you don't want it to like ripple and warp the foam, but you want to make it smaller so that way it's tight and it fits on there really well so that way you don't necessarily have to glue it. I glue the two pieces together by putting wood glue on each like thin wood glue and then boom, it's so pretty. And I had to kind of, just, that's it. Here I am cutting the little, they're basically really long triangles and so that way they angled really nicely and I just did that by a ruler and cutting it with a really sharp blade uh, box cutter basically and then I just glued those onto the edges and I had it on basically all of the edges and so it took a little bit of time and you can tell I'm very focused. So I kind of I just glue everything together with wood glue and angled those little things so I had to stick in the corners first and then put the detailed parts in there and then secure it all together with like that end piece that I just cut out a square and then I just shaped it with scissors afterwards because they're not perfect squares because I didn't measure anything so it's if I was it five foot rule or something like that like stand way back from my cosplay and it will look so much better I'm gonna try to show you my hammer as I'm as I'm doing stuff see like see how pretty it is but like it's, it's not a perfect square, so <laughs> just stand back, move it around a lot, and people can't tell the difference. They're like, oh, that looks so fantastic. Like, I know, doesn't it? <laughs> it's so fucking weird to talk. <sighs> I'm not going to apologize for being weird. You clicked on this video. You. Oh, yeah, and so basically anything you cut into foam, especially if you don't, like, heat treat it with a heat gun first, if you cut something into it, like this little line detailing here, and then you take a heat gun to it, it'll separate, make it more defined, and smooth it out, baby. I looked up um, on, on, the, on the Google, again, um, what is engraved on the top, and then I just copied it, and then of course I ran out of room, so it doesn't say the full thing. Um, but of course, like I said, when you cut into foam, and then you heat it up, it separates, and it smooths out, and then it looks so, it looks really good. This video is now going to be an ASMR video where I just talk softly into the microphone if you're not already asleep, prepare to be. So for the round circle-y parts, I just cut out circles with little edges that kind of look like lemon grabs head and I cut out a whole bunch of those and I didn't count how many I need, I just, I just cut them out baby, I just, I just went wild. Then I cut out the foam portion of the hammer where I just rolled the foam around the dowel, measured. I don't think I showed this, but I cut out like circles and like long rectangles and glued them together and made rings basically that I just shoved down the shaft. And then I put the, um, I put all the little lemon grab rings on there and this little piece I didn't show you how to make. Basically it just looks like pants and then you glue the ends together and you stick it on top and boom you got the end of it and then cut holes in it because that's where the strap is going to go and then there's like a little detailing basically FOMO I just rolled it up like that and stuck it on there with glue and then it's time to dremel and whoa. So after I got all the little nail uh, to smooth the edges and then of course, you know, it's a little rough from the Dremel so I'd have to, you know, heat gun it afterwards thing and then I sprayed it down with some plasti dip to make it all smooth and paintable. So I had some like, real, this is real leather, don't come for me. I went ahead and just threaded it through and then packed in some glue and some more foam to make it more uh, like solid. Painting it with my hands because I got sick of using a paintbrush. Darker around the rings and it made some dimension and for the um, detailed part I can't I don't know what to call it here hang on that part see that I put silver and gold to give it that look I don't know if you can tell right so all of it's basically black with silver on top this is like a reddish brown you know silver and then this is like silver and gold for every Christmas tree. And that's how I did that. And that's how the hammer was made. And um, 
the, sil the silver and gold method is the same thing I did for the Shao Kahn hammer, which I think is actually one of the things that makes it look so, I think it's beautiful. And it, I can't really take credit because I didn't design the hammer, but it does make it look really good. Silver and gold. It's all silver and gold. I hope you have a wonderful day. If you make this uh, by any chance, please like tag me, share it with me. It would make me happy. Goodbye.